This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Coffee and Q, the Smoked Savory Discord, and the Old Fashioned. You can't go wrong with any flavors that the Mad Canadian has at his website at themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast, we're doing this one in memory of Pat Forty and Dan Woken's career. May they rest in peace. And the athletic. Not, not all the athletic. You know what? First off, let's get to the music. Let's let the music come in. There are some <laughs> bad people at the athletic. There are some really good people at the athletic. Mm-hmm. Let's not paint with a big broad brush. Okay, now let's do the music. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Discord. You guys excited? I'm excited. All right, let's let's bring it in. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Hmm. Let me think about that. <laughs> <laughs> let me think about that. It. Well, we've been waiting for this moment for a long time, Jared. It, it feels longer. However long it's been, it's been longer. That's for damn for- sure. A month now? Uh, it's over. The uh, The season was canceled. Not postponed, Mr. Warren. I'm still not happy with him, for the record. Uh, it was postponed slash canceled slash kicked in the nuts on August 11th. So, so yes, you do the month. math. <laughs> Yes. Over uh, today, and I, th- I think it's popped up into the camera. Today is the 16th as we are recording this. So I think our YouTubers just saw me pull the calendar up. Yeah. So uh, let's just say a week and let's just say a week and a month. I did not comb my hair. I really just like took a shower. That's that's what I did. It's still just a little <laughs> bit wet. Got to be prepared. Got to be prepared for our fans here. <laughs> Oh, crap. Um, Yeah, so, guys, we have football. That's, you know, I think I said it on Twitter on on Wednesday. Um, This doesn't feel, I thought I was going to be really happy. And it's not that I'm not happy. Um, This feels less like, I I wanted this to feel like beating Alabama or beating Oregon or beating Miami. That's what I wanted this to feel like. Um, Instead, it feels like, instead it feels like beating Maryland 52 to 51. To me, that's what this feels like. I, I don't, I don't feel as good as I wanted to feel. I really just feel relief. This, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't feel like pulling out a win against a, a a foe, an evenly matched foe. This feels like a thing. This feels like a position that we shouldn't have been in to begin with, like coming back and getting a win over Purdue or Indiana. You know what I mean? It's, it's It doesn't feel like, yes, we did it. It was like, finally, this is over, and we survive to fight another another day. That's what this yeah. feels like. Yeah, exactly. Um, Brawley saying that, yeah, I'm still pissed because we just wasted a month. Yeah, it essentially feels that way where you're just like, it's never should have happened in the first place. We should have already had two games. Well, technically really one because the or game never would have happened. We'll just be but they came out with the new Big Ten only schedule at the beginning of August. Mm hmm. Which makes a lot of sense. You had bye weeks built in. You had opportunity for yep. rescheduling built in. You had more now you games. Now you don't have that. You, it's more of a, well, hopefully you don't have enough people testing positive. Because if you have more than 
four or five players, well, that's you're that's, not playing. That's not true. Um, that that provision, and that's that's a whole thing. I don't even want to get into any of that. But there are provisions, and that's a both. If you look at that, it said something along the lines of if both. And then it said something about population, you're in date. So I don't think it's just players. And it's not just based off of the 85. There's like 110 players on the Ohio State roster, if mm-hmm. you count all the walk-ons. And then do the coaches count in that? Or are we counting the entire student population? Um, we don't have a ton of clarity on what any of that means right now because Big Ten. Um, because Big Ten. Yeah. Kevin Warren finally spoke to the press on Wednesday. And it was longer than five minutes. And he actually took questions from media people like Doug Lay Maurice, who would actually hold his feet to the fire. A big shout yes. out to Doug Lay Maurice for simply asking, what was the deal with your communication or lack thereof? Doug said it slightly more professionally than that. That's that's how I interpreted it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, shout out to Doug Lay Maurice. Um, and, and then Kevin Warren completely dodged it. Of course he did. Um, he talked for a really long time without answering it. Uh, but more importantly than him not answering it, he, I think he had an opportunity in, in that moment. And no one's been tougher on Warren than me. I literally made a Mr. Rogers meme with Mr. Rogers of all people saying, fuck you <laughs> to Kevin Warren. That, this is, this is how I feel about Kevin Warren. It's, uh, no one's been tougher on Kevin Warren than me. He had a chance, an opportunity to put himself on the road to forgiveness with in that question. Had he said, you're right. Our level of communication and transparency was not up to our or anyone else's standard. And I take responsibility for that. Had he said that in response to Doug's question, maybe we could be on the road to redemption. Instead, he dodges the question and he fails to a acknowledge that there was a problem and B take responsibility for that problem. Mm-hmm. So Kevin Warren's still dead to me. This doesn't change. I want, we're all very happy. Ohio state football's back, but and, and this, this does only- not change how bad the big 10 has failed. It, the big 10 has failed terribly. Kevin Warren is still responsible for that, for a lack of communication, for a lack of transparency, for probably not following protocol to cancel the season to begin with. Now that they've, you know, I, I imagine the lawsuits are all going to go away now that football's back and we're not going to get the answers on whether or not votes actually happened or if they followed the proper se- procedure in making those votes. Uh, but we probably will never get those answers, but I think you all know where I stand on what I think happened. But yeah, Kevin Warren's not off the hook here. He put out a fire that he started. That's all he did. This is his fire. He put it out. That doesn't make him a hero. And and what would have happened if the, the parents, fans, coaches didn't step up and say something in a way. And I said this a few episodes ago and it still really feels similar to a way. This almost feels like what the, crew fans went through absolutely we saved the crew now we've saved big 10 football for 2021 or excuse me for 2020 (laughs) uh but yeah it's where would we've been if they didn't step up we didn't have parents of of um just all the all the parents i won't just try to name one or two in particular just all the parents in general have stepped up and said hey I think Randy Wade, all of the parents, all of the parents, but Randy Wade, I think deserves a name check here. Mm -hmm. Just, they just hats off to them and shows their commitment to Buckeye nation, how much they 
just appreciate this uh, this program, this university, and the fans too. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's been. And by the way, and they they faced a lot of crap. Randy Wade in particular, he was the face of this in many ways. Uh, Pat Forty was okay. The time for protesting's over. Da 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 da. Everyone just sit down and do what you're told and don't question authority. Yeah, and you had and you saw and it you too. had Dan woke and being like, "I'm not going to tell anyone what they can or can't do with their free time." But what do those parents who went to Chicago really hope to accomplish? Boom, or that's even, what they accomplished. Or even, yeah, or or even saying that, oh, it looks like Ryan Day and, and Hardball did more harm than good. That's another Dan Woken right there. What an idiot! Like seriously, like ever and everybody. And there's a number of people we could just go on here and just start naming names. About Awoken and Forty who... were the worst. Some people got it worse than others. I think maybe, but we don't need to get into all that. To me, yeah. Forty and Woken were the absolute worst. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, what about Nicole Auerbach? And okay, yeah, probably third place. But Woken and Forty were the absolute worst. Mm. And. There, there was somebody else earlier today, and I don't care to look up the name, but there was somebody else in, that said on Wednesday that this is the darkest day. Oh, in yeah, Penn. that's people, and people were like, uh, "What about what happened in Penn State?" And yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. that's beyond dumb. That's someone using hyperbole, and, and, and I don't, I don't even think they're a legit media person. I don't, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't. Yeah. We're not going to elevate their name. And we don't have to worry about elevating 40 or, or Woken because they're so elevated already. But mm-hmm. All right, let's 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 get back to good news, Jared. Yeah. Buckeye football is back. Buckeye yes. football is back. Not as soon as we would like to have had it. Yeah. Um, we kept hearing, ooh, October 10th, October 10th. Okay, October 17th, and now it's October 24th weekend now, which it's here. It's... I'm fine with it as long as Ohio State has a chance to be able to compete in the playoffs. Yeah. Which there's a good point going on right now too of there's a lot of people who's like, oh, they're only going to play eight or nine games. Should they even be They'll play nine games? Unless there's a yeah, game we'll, canceled along the way. Games. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that here in a little bit. But what about the other universities too and their protocols of whether it's um, fires that's going on with um, with um, the entire conditions West Coast. Over in, in Oregon and California, or even hurricanes and all that that's happening down in the Gulf right now too, and even with um, the COVID and all that too, are there going to be conferences or even universities where they're not going to be able to play like eight, ten games at the are talking about I think playing too. We have to understand this is one of the fantastic benefits of having the committee. You can't tell a computer, well, just keep in mind we had COVID this year. You can't t- there's no way to tell a computer to sort of oh yeah, but but COVID. Keep in mind, keep in mind COVID computer formula. You know what I mean? But we, we put this into the hands of people and that comes with bad things and that comes with good things. But in this case, it's a good thing because we do have people who can say, yeah, but COVID. And it's just, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird season. We're going to be happy that we have what we have. Um, and by the way, I know uh, the, the schedule has not been released yet. Um, I don't anticipate that it's going to be released this week. It might be released next week. We're not super set in stone on New Year's Day, New Year's Eve. We're not super set in stone on the playoff committee. Well, the playoff committee is December 20th and that's December 20th. Eh, Maybe they can move it. Guys, do, do you think that the Big Ten 
is the only conference that's facing all of this right now. Because, yeah, the Big Ten is now starting later because our leadership has their head up their ass. Mm -hmm. Granted. But there's going to be other teams that miss games or who put out a real crappy squad. This season is still fluid. And look at the ACC. There's already a handful of teams that already had to reschedule some of their games. Granted, they did it as well, I believe. Yeah. But they did what the Big Ten originally had. It's like, oh, we'll have some breaks or some bye weeks where you can go ahead and make up the games too. Yeah. So they have that going for them. Um, it's just, I think it's it's an important thing to keep in mind that everyone is facing the same challenge. Now, some people have faced it better, but here we are in, in the Big Ten and this is how our leadership has handled things. And that's unfortunate. But the problem... So I want to say this. I love, I do love what the Big Ten put together because you did run the risk of, yeah, Ohio State is taking this super serious because they're trying to win a national title. Are the kids over at Rutgers taking this serious? Are are they staying away from parties? Are they socially distant? So this does now, you know, a few irresponsible players on Rutgers can't then turn around, infect Rutger, the entire Rutgers locker room and in turn infect all of Ohio State. All of these protocols that the Big Ten have put into place are fantastic. And I love that they're in place. I don't love that we waited until September to put these protocols into place. This virus has been on the run in this country for six months. I mm, love that we just... put all this shit into place. It's great. Why did we wait till September to do it? Not just September, middle of September. It's not just the beginning, it's the middle of September right well, now. Well, they started in, in the beginning of September. Why? Because all of the parents and all the people on Twitter and all the coaches were stomping their feet. All that foot stomping, right, Mr. Forty? That's right. I had I had an A I, I won't mention his name. I had an AM because you know that that's a great future. An AM radio host uh, referred to my my Twitter protesting uh, as a temper tantrum. I may have Cute. I may be a child, but I'm a child with football. <laughs> I'm not saying. I did anything. Don't get me wrong. That's not, that's not me inflating my own influence, mm -hmm. but me as a part of the greater mob <laughs> that was Twitter, that was creating noise. And yeah, it's our best selling merchandise, by the way, merchandise available. Uh, check out the master link. This is the uh, Ohio pale ale shirt. Sloopcast Brewing Company. Um, <laughs> not mine. Not mine, unfortunately. <laughs> no, Kyle's is not for sale. That's a custom make. Um, but mine's for sale. In this, but by the way, our so, now we haven't been on T Public all that long. Let me let me say that we've only been on T Public for a few weeks. Um, and we were on Teespring previously. We think T Public has better quality, so we moved over to T Public. Um, but. So we've only been T Public for a few weeks, but our best-selling singular item in the T Public store says "Fire Kevin Warren." I didn't even put our logo on it. That I just I I didn't even want. It's just like no, this is this isn't about us. I didn't put Sloopcast anywhere on it. I just put it "Fire Kevin Warren" because it wasn't about us. A bunch of the graphics and memes and crap I put out there trying to take down Kevin Warren, didn't put our names on it. It is, this is bigger than us. And I like to think that I contributed to a mob that helped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to overstate our influence. I'm just saying we were one of thousands of voices who were making a lot of noise who kept the movement going. It, this was a movement of the people. Um, I, I want to, I want to read something. Um, I, I you know said to, else, you know, yeah, you, 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 you know, you know who else I want to thank? Who's that? The fans. Yes. 
of Nebraska. 100%. I have gained so many Nebraska followers this week. Ohio State and Nebraska fans have just done the whole uh, Schwarzenegger uh, big old handshake. From Predator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Predator with a big old flex in the arms while they're grasping uh, their hand, each other's hand there. Ohio State and Nebraska now. Yeah, and by the way, I want to say this because we we all have our thing going and Ohio State fans, Nebraska fans, all, all of our temper tantrums got this going. And well, how do you know our temper tantrums actually got this going? Well, one, because Kyle and I have been through this already. Kyle and I saved the crew already. Now, did we do it? Kyle and I know. Were we part of a mob of a larger group of people that helped do it. Yeah. We lended our little voice to it. And it is, it's a little voice. We don't, I'm sure the Venn diagram of Sloopcast listeners and crew fans is relatively small, but we just do what we can. And I want to all, so I want to now sort of take the, we do what we can. And if you, if you're Ohio state fans and you still have some piss, you need to get out. You still have some vinegar you need to express or if any of my new Nebraska fans who followed me on Twitter this week, and there's a lot of you, go Big Red. I, I got you guys. Um, Good color. It reds, it's scarlet, too. Their red Good is color. also scarlet. Mm-hmm. We now need to rally behind USC. Now, they're starting their fight too late, um, but that doesn't mean we can't help. So let's, let's take all of our angst and all of our anger and all of our... Anything you still have left in your tank, let's rally behind USC. Hashtag fight on. I wrote this. I wrote this um, Tuesday night. I said a me- this is on Twitter. I said a message to uh, USC football fans. They will mock you. They will accuse you of not caring about the players. They'll post disproved medical studies. They'll accuse you of not knowing or caring that there's a pandemic going on. They will gaslight you. You know, Kyle, I think I'm going to name this episode Victory Lap because I think that's all we're doing right now. We're just taking a victory lap. Yeah. So what we know right now, Ohio State starting the 24th, there's going to be eight regular season games where they're going to play. Yeah. play there's still going to be divisions, which we can still argue about that, but... It is what it is right now. It's, it's not a thing I feel like spending energy on right now. There's there's a lot of things for, to be angry about right now. That's not one of them. For today. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 there's yeah. Play each other. Play each team in your own division and then two cross games. Then. No announcement has been made about the schedule yet. It could be coming out later this week, next week. We don't know. I, I don't anticipate it this week. I'll say that. Okay. Uh, after eight weeks, it's going to be something really unusual here, and I kind of like it in a way. Yeah, so I do too. Week nine, championship week. Yep. One versus one, two versus two, three versus three, four, five, six, and even the sevens. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like that a lot. It's making sure every team gets their nine games. I, I don't yeah. necessarily know that we need to go all the way down to seven in the future, but I'd love to see, like, the top three all play each other. Three or four. Yeah. Oh, well, three just makes sense. Cause you can do like a, a noon, a four and an eight from a top, from a TV standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like do a game in Detroit, do a game in uh, Minneapolis, do a game in, 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 in Indianapolis. I think that'd be great personally. Now, does it make that- financial sense to do it? And will that ultimately be the, eh, I don't know, well, but I think it'd be cool. Speaking of, yeah. Speaking of um, uh, places to play. So they will still be playing in their own stadiums, but without yeah. fans from what we've heard here, which so far, make, which makes sense. They, they said no fans for now, I, I think is what we've heard. Um, mm-hmm. Now there, you see a bunch of other universities too. Like I, like I saw, since I live in the Raleigh area, I saw they had highlights of the UNC game, and you can just see it's just big, just yeah, 
baby blue seats just all over the stadium there. Uh, I am. I did hear that they're going to do. They're like essentially not going to open it, but they are going to let like immediate family in. And I don't necessarily know all the, the details on that. So there will be people in the stands. It's just not an open ticket sale from my understanding. Um, now, I want to also say that they were not definitive. I think that they said no fans, ellipses, for now. Um, and I think one of the reasons behind, I think, I don't know if they said this officially or if this is unofficial, uh, but essentially the, the idea is that because Michigan has different rules than Ohio that's different than Indiana. That's different than, you know, um, that they didn't want anyone having an unfair advantage. They didn't want Ohio state to be able to fit, even if it was 30, 40,000 people in there and then get to go on the road to Northwestern who has to be closed. They didn't want one team having home field advantage and not another team having home field advantage now is this a statistical anomaly or is it not i'll let you guys decide because we don't have enough data to say for sure but kyle did you did you hear about the home field advantage that occurred in the nfl this week uh the jacksonville nope nope uh far more uh high higher focus there was none they played a full slate of nfl games and it was 50-50 home teams and away teams. And the NFL, it, the stadiums are sparse. Some are, some are closed, some are sparse. But point is, is that there was basically no statistical home field advantage that occurred in the NFL this past weekend with even, even in the best scenario, a sparsely filled stadium. But here's a question for you, Jared. Now, again, that might be a statistical anomaly. We don't have a big enough data set yet. I want to say that. What about what about local um, or home field bands? Uh, yeah, I, d- I didn't see that. I don't know. I, I, th- I think as what, much as, that's a as good much question as that I, I don't have the answer to. Someone might have the much, answer to it. I don't have the answer to it. As much as I would want to see the best damn band in the land yeah. seeing them being able to do Ohio or even just being in the stands me having being in the band in high school pl- trying Flex. to play in an empty stadium where it's just going to echo it's going to sound weird and probably not good at all <laughs> Kyle I, don't, I, I, I appreciate that you would appreciate that I don't think most people would and if the stadium's going to be empty, it would be really nice to have some noise in there because I don't believe that there's any sort of standard because, okay, again, we use the NFL as a comparison. The NFL basically said everyone's allowed to do crowd noise and it's capped at 70 decimals, which is nothing. I don't have a good, I don't have a good comparison to tell you what 60 decimals is, but it's not, it's not a lot. It's not much. So that's what they're doing at the NFL just to make it not sound empty is basically 70 decimals of fan noise. Mm-hmm. Um, college, I'm not aware of any such rules. I didn't see anything about the Big Ten doing that as far as pumped in crowd noise. Is it allowed? Well, is it not well, allowed? Seen, is there a well, decimal you've limit? A, you've seen a lot of other, if you watch, and I know Jared, you didn't, uh, if you watched any games the past few weeks, I, I will say this. I became very confident on Saturday that the season was going to happen. And I there, therefore I started watching football. <laughs> didn't really see, you didn't really see any bands there too. At least from the ones I saw there might, there might've been, I some, saw, I saw ones. some. Okay. I saw, I saw at least one case and it just sort of struck me because they were all, they were basically, because the, the stands oh, are yeah, obviously right, empty. Like, so they were six feet apart. As if they weren't all in a bus together <laughs> at an hour before, <laughs> or they weren't all in the locker room together an hour before. It, the funniest thing was Notre Dame. They have the same tradition as Ohio State, where they get together and they sing the alma mater after the game. They 
they they they got out onto the field and it looked like they were about to do pregame stretches. You know how football players line up to do pregame. That's that's what they look like. And then they sang the alma mater, socially distanced, as if they weren't all on the sidelines together in the huddles together, as if they weren't celebrating touchdowns by jumping all over each other, as if they weren't showering and dressing in a in a crowded locker room together. I get it. Mm-hmm. It's it's about putting a good example and it's about security theater i i i understand but it's also dumb (laughs) you know it's not dumb kyle barbecue barbecue is not dumb kyle we're, we're back on it now it's time for chili it's time for barbecue now's a great time to get that that smoke going because you know before you, now, now you want to get right up against that smoker because now it's starting to get a little bit cool. It's starting to get a little bit cool, so it's not really abrasive to, to be next to a, a, a smoker or anything anymore. Uh, and then I'm just saying if you're if you're doing some slow cooks or even if you're doing some regular grilling, you got to check out our boy, the Mad Canadian. I got the Kerry Steaks. Sca- oh, boy. Stumbled Ooh. all over that one. The Kerry Steak is what that is. The camera never got on it, but that's okay. Kerry Steak's one of my favorite for basically all beef stuff. I mean, it says Kerry Steak, but I've put it on a pot roast. I've put it on hamburgers. It's excellent. Um, I know I got the Brits blend. That's anything Southwest, tacos, salsa, chili. It's it's really technically designated a, a chili mix. It's more versatile than that. Um, I've just straight put it on chicken before. It's excellent. Uh, another thing I want to make everyone aware of, if you are in or near Cary, Ohio this Friday, the Mad Canadian's got his bus going. That's right. Mad Canadian's got a food truck, right? It's, it's a bus. You won't miss it. You won't miss it. I promise. It's scarlet and it's gray. It it, it looks like a big old Ohio State, Ohio State bus or an Ohio State bus. Hey, Mad Canadian. You probably don't really sell steak. Well, I guess you could like from like a Philly... I think I've seen Philly steak trucks before. Mad Canadian, the Ohio steak truck. Huh? And, and you, may see, you may even see a Sloopcast sticker on there too. Yeah, you'll see a Sloopcast <laughs> sticker on there. Yeah, uh, Cary, Ohio. Uh, did he say noon to four, Kyle? Noon to four. Noon to four, Cary, Ohio on uh, this Friday. Um, I would say make sure to check out his Twitter page and his Facebook page to find out where the Mad Canadian bus is going to be. But I can tell you this Friday, he'll be Cary, Ohio, noon to four. Um, I don't know how big Cary, Ohio is. Not very big. I think he said, but he just told us Cary, Ohio. I think it's like downtown. And if it's like most of the towns in that particular area of of, uh, Ohio, it's probably just one street. It's a suburb of Finley, so it's not that big. Yeah, Part bigger than mine. <laughs> Kyle, your 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 town is two stoplights and a subway, <laughs> and two pizza joints, <laughs> and two of course two pe- It's it's every small town. Two local pizza joints, one fast food place, two stoplights, and about seventeen bars and thirty three churches. <laughs> yes, that sounds about right. <laughs> That's it's every small town in Ohio. <sighs> Mac Canadian Barbecue Company. That's what we're doing here. Um, like I said, make sure to check out his Facebook page, his Twitter page, uh, to find out where the where the Mad Canadian bus is going to be. He's also pumping out local music. You know, he's got he's he's doing the whole thing. He he's a Mad Canadian, but he's he's a kind Ohioan. Mad Canadian, kind Ohioan. Uh, make sure to check out the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Uh, use Sloopcast 10 to get 10% off your entire order. That's Sloopcast10 uh, to get 10% off your entire order. You can find the link to his website in our master link, which you can find in the show notes. But again, it's just Mad, Can- Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Kyle, I'm checking. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a 7.3. I'm drinking a tall 7-3, and this is not my first. This is not my first beer of the day. I've been celebrating. Um, so maybe if my from from slurring the speech a bit, well, let me give a quick beer shout out. I know we got some beer heads. This is not a paid advertisement. 
This is uh, this is just a masthead. It's a pumpkin ale. It's not a pumpkin spice ale. Before any of you want to start accusing me of anything, there's it's ac actual pumpkin. Thank you very much. You know we got to get into the fall mood. That's Masthead out of Cleveland. They don't pay me. It's just a really nice brewery. I like them. Now, if they want to pay me, uh, advertising <laughs> inquiries, sloopcast at gmail.com. That's a free so one, update. Masthead. Got to pay for the next one. Updates here, Jared. Yeah. So over, over the past week here, we've seen two names from Ohio State. White, White Davis and... Sean Wade yeah. have come out and said that they are going to um, not play this year and get ready for the NFL draft. Well, with the news finally coming out from the Big Ten, we've at least heard one name, Wyatt Davis, yeah. deciding to come back and play. So where does that lead Sean Wade now? What What's the latest that we've heard? There's no latest first and foremost um nothing has been said publicly um we we do not know at this time and let's let's throw the clock back up on the on the youtube screen it is 7 47 p.m on wednesday night we don't know now i feel good i don't feel great let's let's leave it at good let's it's not let's not bring great into this I feel good that Randy, I almost called him Randy Wade, Sean Wade will be coming back to Ohio State. I think he I made it very clear that he wanted to participate with this team and make a national championship run. That's what he wanted to do. And I, I thought, think that with the season starting October 24th and with... Ohio State being eligible for the national title for being uh, available for the playoff. I think that takes us back to where we were before all of this drama started. And he, he made the choice a long time ago that he wanted to participate in this season. When he lost mm -hmm. faith that the season was going to happen, he went pro. Now, he may or he was supposed to sign with an agent tonight. I don't know if he did or didn't do that. Um, and also, I want to point out because there is a lot of confusion around this that just because you sign with an agent does not make you immediately ineligible. As long as no money, no benefits change hands, then you can still come back. Just because you say, just because you say, I'm leaving. I put a thing out on Twitter. I'm leaving. It doesn't mean anything. There's no legally binding anything to a Twitter post. You, mm -hmm. You're not ineligible because you put a thing up on Twitter. You're not even ineligible if you sign, um, like I said, with an agent, as long as that agent doesn't then slip you $100 in a way that's traceable. <laughs> or if there's any witnesses. Um, so yeah, I, the door is still open for for Wade, and we'll see. I feel good, not great, that he'll be playing for Ohio State. And hopefully by the time everyone's listening to this, maybe we already have our answer and that it's a good answer. Yeah, and I thought it was really weird that he went on ESPN on Wednesday and said, hey, I'm still deciding. <laughs> and didn't really say, yes, I'm coming back. No, I'm not coming back. It's like, I'm still deciding. Now, in a way, I kind of really loved he did that. Just kind of just jab at, at ESPN. Like, <laughs> trolled you. I'm not saying oh, it. <laughs> I, I didn't interpret it like that, but that's funny so, if that's why he that. did it. If, if that's <laughs> why he did it, it's funny. Let's be very clear. That's you funny. Jared? You know what, Jared? Let's just go with that. <laughs> sure. Let's go with that. That's why he did it. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Some uh, some other interesting ones though, Jared. Obviously, we heard Wyatt Davis coming back. Yeah. Good things hearing about Sean Wade. A number of our good friends up north. No, lot, not even lot of, not even as a joke, Kyle. I get that you're joking, but not even as a joke. We a only lot, have a lot of, one set of good friends, 
in this in this conference gbr what's up yeah any huskers <laughs> listening huskers if you're listening let me know love you guys or the team up north they 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 had four players recently i don't know if they were all today jared but all, but there was four players recently that all decided to not play this year. Uh, Jalen, Ambry, Nico, yeah, and Dylan, uh, one of their quarterbacks. Who I do remember seeing Dylan is not playing and is going to be transferring out. Uh, I I don't necessarily know yet what to 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 make of that. I'll, I'll say a couple things. One, Michigan as a university is a mess right now. Um, it, it got lost in all of the other news today, and I never followed up on it because I honestly forgot until I started the sentence. But, like, there was a, a vote of no confidence scheduled against their university president today. Uh, when I say today, I mean Wednesday. Um, I don't know how that went. I don't know. I don't know any of the details on that. Um, and just so everyone's clear, that has nothing to do with football. I want to make that, that is, that's purely academic. That was coming from the academic people that had nothing to do with football. I want to make that very clear. Um, they're a mess. Um, they're isolate. And by the way, Ohio State is also isolating students who are testing positive for COVID. Hey, Jared. Hey, Jared. Yeah. Hold on. Do you have news? No, um, we experienced a lot of technical issues. Technical issues? Um, what, just my voice going to crap? Yeah, no, I just lost you all together for as soon as I started. As soon as I, I just paused the recording real quick here. Uh, well, the um, YouTubers still get to be on board. Hi, YouTubers. <laughs> I, don't, I don't edit the video at all. So, so yeah, I'm going to put this on Discord here. Discord, like, I could hear you, but then it stopped and... And all that. So I got you back. So we're all good right here. Yeah, I think we need to go back to Zoom and figure out how to loop in our our Patreons a different way. Um, all right. Here we go. Discord's not oh. been great for us. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Discord. Right. This isn't the right. anti advertisement. Here we go. Um, if you would just want to repeat back what you said about um, after I after I came in about uh, the four players in Michigan. Oh boy, that's a lot. Um, yeah. Okay. And... <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a mess in Michigan right now. Um, there's a vote of no confidence that was supposed to have taken place today. I have no idea. I didn't follow up on that. Um, a purely academic matter. This has nothing to do with Michigan playing or not playing football. Purely academic. Um, they're isolating their COVID positive students, which is also a thing Ohio State's doing, but the living conditions for those students um, came under a lot of scrutiny. They weren't being fed properly. Uh, their rooms were barren. They didn't have a microwave. They didn't have any sheets on there. Yeah, it was, it was a big old mess. Um, there was an uprising with, anyway, it, it's, you don't, you don't need me to talk about all the internal academic university matters at Michigan right now. Michigan's got bigger issues. Um, and does any of that play in? I don't know. Does the players feeling like the university at large does not have their back at all play into that? I don't know. Um, could this just be a bunch of kids? And I don't know. Uh, I know they lost an offensive lineman who opted out weeks ago. He opted out weeks ago. He's NFL bound. He's an excellent offensive tackle. Um, I know at least the quarterback who opted out, opted out, but then opted right into the transfer portal. So, and in case anyone doesn't know this, this year does not count towards anyone's eligibility. No one's losing a year of eligibility this year. So it's just a free opt out year. If you, if you, this is a great year just to transfer. Because you're not losing a year of eligibility. Mm -hmm. So I, I I have no idea what the situation is with any of those Michigan players individually. They I, I think we've seen a ton of opt-outs out of LSU this year. Why? I think they know LSU is going to be a shit show, honestly. 
Their offensive coordinator left. Joe Burrow left. That's what made that team great last year. Um, this idea that Ed Orgeron is actually a good coach, everybody, is nonsense. Um, he's Gene Chizik. Is that is that right? The guy who won the national championship uh, with Auburn, but that's just because he had Cam Newton and no one could do anything about Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. That that's that's what Ed Orgeron is. He he had a really good offensive coordinator and the best quarterback in the country, and that's what you need to win. And and and, and the great defense, but most of that defense went to the NFL. Their best wide receiver opted out. I, and LSU is just going to be LSU again. They're still going to have a really good defense because it's LSU. LSU always has a strong defense, but their offense is just going to be, it's just going to be LSU all over again. I, there's a AP voter who's still voting LSU is the number one team. And that person should have his vote stripped from him. Yeah. There's others I can think of too, but <laughs> Kyle, I want you to speak the entire podcast into your beer glass. I talk like this. And... <laughs> <laughs> My first Oktoberfest of the year. What? You're behind. That's okay. I forgive you. All right. I just got to play catch up. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next up here, Jared. We have not talked about this at all because of everything going on, but we are here September 16th, Jared. Yeah. And our first Black Stripe has been removed. (sighs) Thank you. Black Stripe news. Yes. We haven't had any Black Stripe news in a very, very long time. In a year. Probably. Because I don't think we had any in the spring. None in the spring. I'm, I'm almost certain. I, I would, with there being a shortened spring practice. Uh, yeah. I'm, I know this is for a fact because they said first stripe of the 2020 season here. Trey Sermon. Yep. Trey Sermon. Uh, that No surprise. He comes in no basically as a senior. Um, he's going to be the first guy to lose his stripe. Are we sure? No, no I want to say one of the freshman wide receivers lost their stripe in the spring. Is that wrong? Am I wrong? From, from what, from what I read here, you know what, Kyle? I really don't. It want said, to. "We'll figure." Someone will tell us on Twitter, on right. YouTube. Someone will tell us if we're wrong. It's fine. It's it's so weird. Um, I want to say we're uh, we're gonna pick up a a regular game schedule, a regular game week schedule next week. Um, we know Ohio State isn't playing for another few weeks yet. What, like another five weeks, something like that. Um, we're going to start picking up the Friday episodes. That's um, just going to be like we would have done bye weeks in, in seasons past. We're still going to pick some games. Um, we we want to bring guest pickers back in. Uh, this is all starting next week. So we're going to bring some guest pickers in. Um, our Patreon folk will get first shot at that. Uh, but... Uh, anyone else mm-hmm. who wants to join absolutely can after our Patreon people get, get a shot at that. And if you want to be a part of that and you want to make sure you get a shot, the lowest Patreon tier is only $3 a month and you get to listen in live on these podcasts and get early access to episodes and, and other fun stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Patreon, just Google Patreon and Sleepcast. I can give you the URL, but no one does that anymore. <laughs> just Google it. It'll be fine. You'll, you'll get there or you can check out the master link. Uh, but yeah, we're going to pick up our regular Monday, Friday episodes starting next week. We're going to start picking games next week and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Um, segments, Jared. What's that? Segments. Oh, doing segments again. I miss doing segments doing, of course we won't get to do know your enemy for a while yet or the sloop sayers. Um, the know your enemy has been going on for quite a while. So, (laughs) This is a fact. Uh, we, we do, in fact, know our enemy. Uh, his name is Kevin Warren, and this isn't over, Kevin Warren. We're not done with you. This yeah. doesn't make everything okay. You effed this up from the beginning, and reversing your own F up in a 
blatantly effed up way by avoiding the press for 28 days. 28 days. You're not off the hook. This doesn't make everything okay, Kevin Warren. The decision to cancel was handled poorly. Everything after that was handled poorly. And just because the season's now okay, and by, I'm sure, you were drug into it by Ohio State and others, and by Nebraska's lawyers, that you were drugs just screaming into this decision, doesn't make this okay. This is the equivalent of Ohio State grabbing Kevin Warren by the back of his shirt, taking him back into the room, and forcing him to say he's sorry to the kid he just hit. What do you say, Mr. Kevin? Mr. Warren, what do you say to little Johnny who you hit? I'm sorry. That that's what happened. Kevin Warren was forced to say he was sorry by President Johnson. But who is our But did he even say No, he, he didn't sorry. say sorry, but he fixed it. He Speaking fixed of, it in a terrible way. Speaking of President Johnson here. Our new hero. The savior of football, President Johnson. All right. So you have a long list here, Jared, oh. of like four or five pages here. You know what? It's fine. We don't we don't need to read any of those notes. I think that was just if we lost momentum uh there was a press conference uh i know that the buckeye scoop uploaded the entire press conference to youtube so i don't we're not going to read those quotes to you um you can go watch them say it themselves um i want to say this president johnson's taken a lot of heat um including uh right out the gate from me i did reverse on that um because unlike kevin warren i can admit when i'm wrong uh, but I want to say that she was great throughout all of this. And if anyone out there is still doubting that she's been great throughout all of this, I'd like to point out that Urban Meyer on Big Ten Network Wednesday morning um, went out of his way to credit her. Now, you might be saying, well, of course, Urban Meyer, da, 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 da. Well, of course. Listen, I'm not saying if she was bad. If, if she was a roadblock, if she was a hindrance in any of this, one, I don't believe we have football right now. Ohio State's the lone university in the Big Ten who could have made this happen. Also, Nebraska's lawyers. But if not for Ohio State, this doesn't happen. We're the big dogs in the conference. Of course we are. Now. Urban Meyer would never in a million years, because he's a professional, ha and if he disliked President Johnson, if he just disliked her and thought she was a problem and she was some horrible hindrance, he may have just not said her name. He wouldn't have said anything bad about her. He just would have not brought her up or maybe given her a passing, whatever. No, he went out of his way. I talked to her. She was great. She's a former student athlete herself. She said she'd give up anything to chase a championship with her team again. Goes out of his way to talk about how much he likes President Johnson, who's not a person he has any loyalty with. She's brand new, if anyone doesn't know that. President Johnson and Urban Meyer, um, he was not the coach at the same time she was the president. Now, he still ho holds some sort of assistant athletic or something or other position over at Ohio State. But realistically speaking, he did not have to go out of his way to talk about how great she has been throughout all of this. He could have said nothing. He could have said very little. He was... I So if, if anyone's out there still wondering, ah, I don't know what to think about her. I'm going with Urban Meyer. That's that's my position on it. I'm, again, he went out of his way and talked in detail about how much of a ally she's been throughout all of this. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah. um, for the first time, I think in a long time, we love our president at Ohio State. <laughs> I didn't dislike Drake nearly as much as other people disliked Drake. Um, but 
I, I do feel like we actually have an ally in the president's office now. So that's yes. something. You know what I've been seeing as we've um, been recording here, Jared? What's that? And I want to. I just want to get your reaction. You don't have to say anything. I just want to get your reaction. Well, just how else would you get my you. reaction if I didn't say something? Um, <laughs> I don't know who he said it to, but Dabo Sweeney. Okay, here we go. Dabo Sweeney. All right, you ready for this? You ready All for right. this? Instant reaction, Dabo Sweeney. Let's go. You ready for this? Let's go. He says he doesn't think college football would have been any less competitive without the Big Ten. <laughs> so it says, quote, there's been a lot of champions come from conferences that were already playing. I, he's not wrong. Um, except that Ohio State took him down to the wire last year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, but let, let's face facts. Where have all the national champions co come from the last 20 years? ACC and SEC. Ohio State's had two. Um, the Pac-12, one or maybe two, or two for USC. Whatever whatever many Pete Carroll won in, at his time at USC. And then Texas had one. Texas had one. Again, if we're talking, again, since the 2000s. 20 years, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like Texas won. I think it's USC one. They might have a second, but I think it's one. Uh, Ohio State two. And the rest, is that right? The rest have all been SEC or ACC? When did Miami change? Uh, well, they're ACC. Well, they're ACC now. Yes. Uh, they may they have been now. Big East at the time, but he's talking about who's playing now. Yeah. So we're counting them as ACC in this conversation. But I think they were ACC at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to swear by it, though. Either way. But but he's not wrong. Florida State's won national titles. But the um, first part, saying it's not... It's, I think just one. But even the first part where he says it's... Would have... That, that part's crap. Think it would have been any less competitive. That's crap. The second best yeah. team, according to literally everyone, they're ev literally everyone before COVID, before the Big Ten canceled the season, before any of that. Everyone said there are two teams above the cut right now. It's Ohio State and Clemson. So if you just remove, even if, you, even if we bounce it out, Kyle, let's bounce it out. Let's say the best four teams in the country, Ohio State. Clemson, no particular order, Bama, Oklahoma. Georgia has a quarterback mess right now. I'm not including Georgia. Florida State, I'm not including Florida yeah, State. I would have stuck it with it without COVID and all that. I know you disagree with me, but I think Oregon had a good has a good team too, or would have a good team they're, too. They're the next tier down. They're in the top okay. ten. I'm not putting them in the top four. Okay. Um, I don't know about Oklahoma, but okay. I, they're they're like one dash B. I, let's just use three. I can agree with three. Okay, whatever. We're getting we're getting outside the point. Let's say three. Let's say there are three teams a cut above the rest right now. Okay. Take one of those teams out. That's a thirty three percent reduction in the best. You remove a playoff team from contention altogether. And that makes things less competitive? Go fuck yourself, Dabo. You're welcome, people. We got our reaction. <laughs> I... Mm -mm. But the, mm. the latter part of... That's that's bad medicine we have to take. The, the second part of what he said about all the teams recent years, most of the teams who won championships are already playing. That's bad medicine. We got to take it. Sorry, Ohio State for all the talent. Only won two the last 20 years. The rest of the Big Ten, goose egg. Sorry, bad medicine. We got to take it. Sorry. Pac-12, sorry. We got to take that medicine. We can talk about bias, and we can talk about polls. We can talk about the BCS, and we can talk about playoffs. All right. I, I get that there's bias built into college football. That's, that's just a fact. And if you want to fix that bias, 
go listen to our radical plan to fix college football podcast. Um, that that's the only way you fix bias. The only way you fix bias that I have seen is our radical plan to fix college football. It's only a few episodes back. Go find it. It's a good listen. So yeah, bias is built in. Um, if not for the playoff, that Ohio state team in 2014 doesn't get a chance to play for the national title. That's a fact. They don't even get the chance. So if we had still been working under the BCS and we were still working under that system that had more bias in it, I'm not saying all the bias is gone, but the BCS had more bias in it because you only got two is a lower margin of error. Ohio, that Ohio state team doesn't even get a chance to play for the national title. Facts. They were the fourth team in. They don't even get a shot. That's that's just how that works. Sorry. Yeah. But we got four teams that year. We got it right under the wire. We got a fourth team that year. That team won the national title. That team was Ohio State. So a little less bias did get Ohio State an opportunity at a title that they took advantage of. So I'm not so I'm not saying Yes, bias is in the system. I'm not saying there isn't. But the fact of the matter is two, I think we've counted two national titles the past 20 years, not from the ACC or SEC or the Big 12. He's right. The second half of his statement is right. The first half of his statement is absurd. We all know who the top three teams in college football are right now. You can't just remove one of those teams and act like that's not a big deal. All right, Kyle, you, you want to get me started on anything else or is it time to wrap this episode? Did you see about California's governor? I, I know USC's fighting right now. Um, I know I read that thing earlier about how we all we we still have work to do. Let's let's rally behind USC. So what what is it, Kyle? I, if it's happened in the past few minutes, I don't know. No, it's just that both actually both governors from California and Oregon are like, yeah, you could play football, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, can we? So we'll see. Yeah. They, they started their foot stomping and their everything else a little too late, unfortunately. So while everyone in the big 10 was being mocked by Dan Woken and Pat Forty for stomping their feet and for, Oh, you should just give up. And by the way, crew fans were also told to give up. I remember you Lexi Lawless. I remember you telling us to give up. Don't think I don't remember. Guess where Columbus is? Columbus. And guess what? There's a new stadium coming next year. You're damn right there is. In downtown Columbus. In downtown Columbus. Right there. Right there with all the other stadiums. How much? How how hard? People will tell you to give up, not because it's hopeless, but because they don't want you to win. They will demean you. They will gaslight you. They will call you a dreamer. And I know I'm not the only one. They have other goals. They have other goals. Kyle, that's new crew. New crew stadium is looking good. I really wanted to end the episode on that. I felt like that was a good little zip right there to just be like, they have other goals and then just sort of zip it and then sort of focus in. That would have been a great, way to just sort of transition into the end and you blew it (laughs) i either need one more or one less beer i'm at the wrong level of beer right now oh kyle it's time to end this episode i'm starting to get the beer sweats um yeah so that's the end of today's episode uh check out the master link it's got all the stuff um if you want to participate in our guest picks, uh, please send us an email, sloopcast at gmail.com. That is the only way for you to do it. And unless you're in 
unless you're a Patreon member, then you 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 know you can just hit us up in the Discord. But for everyone else, uh, sloopcast at gmail.com will get you on the guest picker list. Um, also, the Patreons will get preference on when they pick as well. That's that's just me being real with you. They they help pay for for this microphone and this nicer camera that isn't the crappy camera on my desk. They help pay for this stuff, guys. And I, that's not me demeaning anyone because, dude, it's COVID time. A lot of people don't have... I, I'm not... If you're having COVID problems, I don't want your money. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Um, but just they, they help keep this thing going, so they're going to get preferential treatment. That's reality. Um. So they'll, they'll, they'll get those, they'll get those, uh, first slots and those preferential slots, but everyone else can join in after, after they've taken up their slots. So sloopcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can find our email address in under the, uh, master link, as well as our t-shirt stores. We have multiple, um, we have both the Sloopcast store, which has Sloopcast branded merchandise. And we also have the 7071 store, which just sort of has like Ohio stuff, but isn't necessarily directly tied to the podcast. So you don't have to, oh, what's a, what's a Sloopcast? And then you have to have an awkward conversation about with your elderly aunt about what a podcast is. And <laughs> I, I get it. Maybe you don't want to wear podcast merch. You can just buy some 7071 stuff. It still looks cool and it still supports us. Um, that's it. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? You want to tell us how the crew stadium's looking good? Oh, crew stadium's looking good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm really looking forward to, to see how the construction of it's going to continue and really anxious to see how the beer garden's going to look. I'm so excited for that. that beer garden. Mm-hmm. I really so it was other announcers that I that I saw earlier this year when they were when they were doing crew games. I don't know were, if I'm allowed to say publicly because I have a bit of just because I don't want to. Oh, I have some inside info, and I, I have the same inside info that anyone else who's a season ticket holder has. So I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to I, once again. But I was given a number, but the person who told me the number asked me not to repeat it. But it's a lot of beer taps in that beer tap garden. It's a lot measured in the, say, measured in the just, dozens. Yeah. Let's just say that you probably want to go to every game. <sighs> and even then, whew, depending upon if some of them are samplers, you need, you need those. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be doing flights at the crew game, but we'll see. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Make a killing. Yeah, I, 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 because they have to give you like plastic cups because they don't do glass in stadiums. Oh. So you have to get like little tiny plastic. I mean, it's possible. Oh. It's possible. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else in Kyle's corner? LeBron James. LeBron James. That's, LeBron that's James it. That's all we got to say. Oh, wait a minute. One more thing for Kyle's corner. We got an Apollo. Okay. YouTube. Yeah. YouTube viewers are now getting Apollo cam. Hi, buddy. What you doing? Oh, and now we have a second dog. I'll let you. It's your dog. I'll let you introduce him. Yeah, it's Leo. Say hi, Leo. Nope, he just wants to give looks. He's yeah. Up wanting to. Of course, he's white, <laughs> and against your white shirt, it's he's just kind of getting lost. There you. There you go. There, you go. there he is. All right, all right. That that we're 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 just straight up pissing off our audio only listeners right now. <laughs> so. I want to encourage everyone to subscribe to us on YouTube. Once again, that link can be found in the master link. Um, We post both to the Sloopcast and Buckeye Scoop YouTube pages. uh, So you can find us on either. And tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the Midwesterns. We have a victory for the Midwest for us tonight so uh alt country rock band the midwesterns will be ending today's show uh you can find the song title and a link to their stuff down in the show notes and with all of that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is the midwesterns what's up youtube now we can do dog cam we don't have to piss off the audio only listeners now because now we have dog cam 
Now we have dog cam. And you get to hear my playing with the dog voice. We all have one. We all have one. We all have a special voice that we use when we play with the dogs. Of course. Oh, now LG wants to play. Come here, LG. You want to come up too? No? Okay. All right, let's rejoin the audio listeners. Once again, I'd like to thank the Midwesterns for ending today's show, and I'd like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's show. Kyle, I've really, really gotten into the Discord and the Four Horsemen lately, because I've been doing this thing where I make some coleslaw, and I make just like a big baggie of coleslaw, and it's a, it's a vinegar-based coleslaw, because I don't, I don't, I'm not that into mayo. I don't want like a ton of mayo. It's not, not my deal. So I do a vinegar-based one, and I like to take a bunch of the vinegar-based coleslaw, I like to put it in a big salad bowl, and I like to take some chicken, just sort of get it cooked up in a pan, and when I flip that chicken over, I coat it, and I mean I coat it. I like hot stuff. You guys might not want to do this, or you might want to use a different Mad Canadian Spice, so it just sort of depends upon your heat tolerance level. Maybe you want to bump that down to a Sonoran heat, or potentially a smoked, um, but I, I coat it in either some Four Horsemen or some Discord. That's a four pepper blend in both of those. The Four Horsemen has uh, more of a salty base and the Discord has a kind of a sweeter base. Uh, so, but they're both like really spicy four pepper blends. So I, I code it, you might wanna start off a little bit slower. Um, so I cooked that up, coated in the Four Horsemen, uh, finished cooking it in the pan, drop the hot chicken onto the cold coleslaw. And because, and again, this sort of helps with all, all the heat is that I have it mixed in there with all that coleslaw. So that, that helps reduce the heat a bit. Um, but it's it's been like my staple go-to COVID lunch lately uh, as I try and shed some COVID pounds. <laughs> we all have. <laughs> It's just, it's a lot easier than a salad because like a salad, you have to kind of cut up the stuff as you go and you have to cut, oh, I got to cut up the stuff for today's salad. Well, no, now I just like have all the peppers and onions and I just, you know, you sub out the lettuce for some cabbage and I like having this basic coleslaw just sitting in the fridge I can use for a salad of sorts and I'm a fan and we're going to get another Apollo visit. Hi, Apollo. You know, the door to go outside is open. You can just go. Yes, that's the microphone. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you can also find the Mad Canadian in downtown Cary, Ohio, this Friday from four, nope, from <laughs> noon to four. He's starting at noon and ending at four. From noon to four, Cary, Ohio. Make sure to tell him this Loopcast sent you. Uh, so if you're in or near Cary, Ohio, and you're looking for a lunch, uh, and you wanna maybe try out some of these spices that you hear us talk about, and you just want to say hi to uh, Mr. Tucker. That's the Mad Canadian. Say hi to Mr. Tucker. Tell him the Sloopcast sent you. And uh, then punch him in the face really, really hard. And just see, like, the Sloopcast sent you. That, that's what you do. Tell him you own a, um, a deep fryer. You mean an air fryer. <laughs> air fryer. That's what it is, an air fryer. <laughs> and then tell him how much you love McCormick. <laughs> oh, please don't. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, Mad Game Barbecue Company, where he has your butts covered. <laughs>